What's going on guys? So today I want to go over scouting 101. I get a ton of messages from people asking how do you scout? How do you scout? I need some suggestions. Give me some tips and tricks. A lot of guys don't scout or a lot of guys don't know how to scout and I do a ton of scouting. Uh, right now it's middle of September. I'm out scouting, getting ready for the youth opener, hoping to take a youth out for that youth hunt. But mainly scouting for that opener. I'm going to be hitting the northern opener and the southern opener. The two huge things that I like to ride on when it comes to scouting is location, 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 and access, access, access. You have to find those spots where not everybody else is going to be. Every single waterfowler waits all year. They have to get out there. They have to get after those ducks. They've waited for the exact same day that you and I have waited for. So my big thing, I like to get away from where everybody else has very easy access to get to. I fortunately work for myself, so I have a ton of time to scout, and I have a ton of time to get out there and do as I please, and get out there and hold my spot down where I like to hunt. So I don't struggle too much, but I know a lot of guys do. A lot of guys work that Friday job all the way until 3, 5, 8 p.m., and they don't have the ability to get out and scout as much as people like me. So I'm gonna give you my tips. Like I said, location. Find those spots that not everybody else is going to be hitting. So here in southeast of Wisconsin, we got spots like Big Muskego. We got spots like Princess Point. We got spots all over the inland lakes. We got Vernon Marsh. We have a ton of those spots where it's drive right up to them, go right on in with the boat or right on in with the canoe and the kayak. That's what everybody's looking for. Most people are looking for those spots, but there's thousands just in southeast of Wisconsin, and my friends know this, thousands of spots out there that have a ton of birds that you can't back a boat into. So location, location, location. Don't always try to find the easiest spot. Find those hard to get to spots. You got apps for your phone, like Onyx Maps. It shows you all, and I mean all, of the public land on those maps. And a lot of times it'll show you the accesses. If not, it'll show you the road that you can walk in on. The other thing, I just said it, access. Find those ones that are not accessible by backing your boat in. Find those ones that you gotta put some footwork in. Today I'm out here with my Stoger M3500 and I'm out here with my Nikon 400 millimeter Tamron. I'm out here scouting. Maybe I'll jump some geese so I brought this or maybe a dove will fly over and I was like, you know what, maybe I'll hit a dove quick or take a goose home on a jump shoot. But I'm really out here with a Nikon 100 to 400 Tamron lens. This lens gives me the ability, just like a spotting scope, to zoom way in, way out, Take the picture and use that for reference when I'm talking to my buddies. Hey, check these ducks out. Check this spot out. Look at all this area. Maybe I'm looking for deer spots. Shoot a picture with the big lens. I don't have to get anywhere near it. Don't have to disturb the area. I love using this because it's just like a spot and scope, but I can save this one, take this home, edit it, and remember it and put it on my maps so I know what I'm coming back to look for. So, location, location, location. Get away from everybody else on that opener. Get away from everybody else as much as you can the most of the season and access. Find those spots that are not easily accessible. It's pretty awesome. I'm like 150 yards ahead on this little creek, there's like three geese sitting on the water. Hopefully we can get the stoger to bark on them, but we're gonna have to do some sneak attack. It'll be a fun little jump shoot if I can get close enough. Yeah! All right, guys, next I want to go over something that all of us see the goose hunters doing all single day, every day, every week, every single hour, you name it, they're doing it. And we all know what that is. It's binoculars. They sit in their trucks, their cars, their motorcycles. I've even seen it on the mountain bikes. You see it, you got the binoculars, and they're sitting there out the truck window, knocking it out, doing the scouting outside of that window. They're looking for that who, what, when, where, why, how. A lot of times they don't even have access to that field, but they're watching that field so they can say, okay, it's time that I go talk to that farmer and see what it's gonna take for me to get on these geese. They're looking for why the birds are coming there, how many, where they're landing, what direction, where they're landing in the field, what area of the field they're landing in and why they're landing in that area of the field. They're going over all these different details simply with a pair of these. But don't forget, you can do this exact same thing in the marshes and I know a ton of us aren't doing it. 
You can get on your mountain bike. You can get on your hikers. I'm out here today. I'm on the hikers. I'm about three miles into the marsh and I'm out here with the binoculars. I'm out here with the Nikon and the Tamron. I'm out here just in case I see a little gem fly over. And then I'm out here with the phone looking at Onyx maps, checking out the who, what, when, where, why, how around me access points and seeing what I see. Cause there's a couple spots in this marsh I've never been to. And I want to see what they look like on foot. And I want to keep my distance cause I don't want to go in and go kicking birds out because we're just a couple days away from youth season. And if I see something great, I'm taking a youth in on it. So don't forget, bring your binoculars when you're scouting. If you happen to have a big lens like this, yes, I know they're extremely expensive, but if you have a lens like this, maybe even a spotting scope, bring it because you will not regret it. You see the goose hunters doing it all the time. I'm doing it all the time, whether it's kayak, canoe, boat, I'm out here on my hiker. Sometimes I bring my mountain bike. So make sure you're bringing optics with you so you guys can keep a distance and you don't have to walk so far or scout so far. You can stay a couple hundred yards away and see what's going on in every single aspect of the marsh. Whew. Putting that footwork in. I'm about four miles in the scouting. I'm on my way back to the truck because I got to walk past the truck to get to the next section. So I got about a mile and a half in on the next spot. And uh, haven't seen much waterfowl other than a couple geese. I wasn't able to jump them because somebody came around the corner in a canoe and yeah, that was the end of that. But saw a couple ducks flying around really far out. I haven't really been by the marshy spot. I was kind of hanging out by the river, checking out a couple potholes I know about, but I'm on my way that way. We'll see what ends up happening, but uh, they said it was gonna be 60 today. As usual, meteorologists getting paid six figures to be wrong. Oh, the joys of Wisconsin. Hopefully it turns around soon here. Otherwise, it's going to be a blind mission on the youth hunt, baby. Next, I wanted to get into detail about what you're going to be looking for, the who, what, when, where, why, how of once you find your spot. Huge thing to me is size. You want to find that size. I want to find something just big enough that myself and maybe another guy or maybe myself, my buddy, and another group of two of people that I know, we can hold that spot down. This way we can work those birds effectively. I don't want something too big where you got to worry about somebody else coming in, but you definitely want to find something big enough that you are able to work the birds to you so that nobody's trying to pull the birds off of you. You all know how the marsh hunts go. Sometimes with the field hunt, it's always a huge competition of calling and screaming at them, screaming and screaming at them. Try to avoid it by looking at the size of your spot. Next, huge wind direction and sun angle. As we all know, when the fall months start to come in, you're looking at a lot more of north, northwest, and northeast. Try to find those spots that have a lot of great huntable areas with those grasses and those tree lines with the north, northwest, and northeast at your back. This way you can have those birds coming into. Northeast is always a great option because this direction is east. You guys may not see it, but this is east, that's west. The sun rises over here. So if this is north, I would love to be facing this way so the birds are landing into the sun. They can't see me in the first place. They're getting that glare of the sun direct and the glare of that sun off the water. So I'm completely inv invisible and I kind of for the most part, we'll have that north wind in my favor to the northeast. Hopefully it's a north northeastern that day. So sun angle, wind direction, very, 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 very crucial and pay attention. Bird commit direction. Those binoculars and this bad boy are going to play a huge role when it comes to opener because those birds all year, they've been working that area all year pretty much the exact same way all year. A lot of these birds are local, except for those teal and woodies. A lot of these birds are local. So they've been coming into this spot over and over and over again. They do have a preference. If it's not that windy, they're gonna have a preference of how they like to come into that spot. Next, can I walk that spot? Can I put my waders on and walk in there? Not everybody has a dog. Even if you do have a dog, you still have to be able to get to the spot. So I pay close attention to, can I walk it? And what I'll do, even if I've never been there before, and I do this with my friends, they see me do it all the time, we get to the spot, I walk out 50 yards. So make sure you can walk that spot. Also, focus on depth for your decoy rigs. If you're pushing on them 36 inch rigs and you're talking about water up to here, you know, 45, 40 inches, your rigs ain't gonna touch the bottom. So make sure that you have the right decoy rigs that can really get down there and to the depth that you're going to need them. 
splashers and machines. Make sure it's not too mucky, make sure it's not too weedy. Make sure you have the full capability of using those splashers and using those machines to your advantage. Spinner wings, just make sure you have long enough stakes because a lot of guys bring in those three stakes to some of those marshes that they come with. Can you only use them in half the spots in the marshes in the first place because they're not long enough. So make sure you have long enough stakes for your spinners. Concealment is the huge one. In the Marine Corps, we use this thing, cover and concealment, cover and concealment. Well, unfortunately, I'm not defending myself from other hunters coming in blazing shotguns on me. So I really just need to focus on concealment. Look at what's around you and make sure you match it. If you're not able to match it, make sure you're sitting in that first row of grass, right behind that first row, maybe that second row of grass, those fields, those tree branches, the cattails. Make sure you're sitting in. If you're capable of blending in with that concealment right to that front layer, you could stand out front for the first hour and you're never gonna be seen in the first place because by the time they see you, it's already game over. So concealment. So the things we just went over, size, wind direction, commit direction, can you walk it? Size of your decoy rigs, make sure you have the right lengths. Capable of splashers and machines, is it not, is it? Concealment and sun angle, two huge ones there. Size and sun angle, make sure you play that sun. We all know we gotta play the wind when it comes to setting up our decoys, but a ton of guys never consider the sun rising in the east or the sun setting in the west. So make sure you're focusing on those things, guys. So there we have it, guys. That's Scouting 101. I've been taking these notes for several years mentally. I finally put them on paper after several people asking me, how do you scout, Max, after they see me out scouting all the time? So there you have it. That's all of them. That's everything I know about scouting for the most part. Make sure you guys head on over to Midwest Waterfowl Flyway on Facebook. Once again, that's Midwest Waterfowl Flyway. It's a big Facebook group. It's growing every single day. We're going to make a huge community of progression and greatness, not only from myself and Chase McCulloch, but from you guys to bring it all forth into one massive community and blow the waterfowl nation away. Thanks, guys. <laughs>